everyone and welcome back to my channel! Well, in my last video I have promised you that after making the two kind of darker and scarier dolls I was going to make a couple of very happy and colorful ones and this is exactly what we're going to make today and actually yes, I want to make my doll very happy, very colorful but I also want to make something that would kind of bring up the good memories back something from the childhood and that's why I decided to make Glinda the Good Witch doll from The Wizard of Oz and first of all, I wanted to share with you a story that is, I don't know, now it seems quite ridiculous to me because me as a child, I first met not the real Glinda but I've met, I don't know, a doppelganger, an imposter of Glinda because, you know, I was born in the USSR, I was born in Belarus and in the Russian-speaking community we have our own version of the Wizard of Oz because, in fact, some Russian writer back in the 30s, in 1930s uh, wrote a book called The Wizard of the Emerald City that was an exact copy of the Wizard of Oz. Really, everything was the same, like the main characters were the same. The girl, the dog, the cowardly lion, the tin man, the scarecrow, the witches, the good witches, the bad witches, I don't know, the flying houses, the Kansas was there, the yellow brick road was there, the scene with, uh, with the girl falling asleep in this poppy field, it was all there, this is exactly the same story. But it was called not the Wizard of Oz, but the Wizard of the Emerald City. The main character's name, the girl's name, was Ellie, not Dorothy. And this is it, probably. So it's absolutely ridiculous because it's supposed to be a translation of the Wizard of Oz, of, or I don't know, or an adaptation of the Wizard of Oz. But that person, Mr. Volkov, he just simply stolen an American story, an American book and put his name on it. He, there were really very subtle details changed, mainly the names were changed. The plot was the same, the characters, the types of the characters, it was all exactly the same. Some names were different. So, me as a kid born in, <laughs> in the USSR, of course, I first learned about the Russian version of this story. I've got actually a book from my father that was his book in his childhood. It was an absolutely beautiful edition, published in, I don't know, some early 60s, I think some this period of time, uh, that, that book had absolutely beautiful illustrations and uh, actually the good witch, the pink witch, her name was Stella. I will try to look up the picture, the illustration from that book, because for me, as, f as for a little kid, this Stella, the good witch, was the prettiest character ever. I was really in love with this Stella. I didn't care about this Ellie, Dorothy, the, the girl character. I was really in love with this beauty of uh, the Stella, Stella the Good Witch. So, when I was probably around 10, I've learned that this story, uh, The Wizard of the Emerald City, is not really an original story, that it's been really stolen one. Uh, then, I don't know, my parents probably bought me the real book, The Wizard of Oz. I remember that I was really, I don't know, scared, worried, afraid of watching the American film, because I really wanted to see how they made the American version of the Stella which and I was really worried about being disappointed but actually I even remember clearly remember watching this old Hollywood film and I really loved Glinda the Good Witch. So, I'm so happy, I was totally enchanted, but also, strangely enough, in my head, they still don't exist like one character. Like, for example, the girl, the Dorothy or Ellie, they are the same character for me, or Lion, or, you know, this Tin Man or Scarecrow, they're the same character, it's just like a Russian version of it, an American version of it. But the Good Witch, the Stella and Glinda, they kind of stayed separated for me because yeah they look absolutely different and uh, for me as for a kid i really i was really enchanted by the stella characters so she kind of stayed untouched 
Oh, and by the way, he wrote that book in 1939, and it was exactly the year when the Hollywood film came out. I don't know, I feel like Mr. Volkov really enjoyed the movie. <laughs> I don't know, I really cannot understand how this was possible. So, it was a little bit a longer intro, but it was very important for me to share this story because I know that at least half of my audience is from American, probably American people don't know it. But yes, of course, today we are going to make an American version of Glinda, the original Glinda, because not that many people know Stella, the good witch, and even less people know Stella from that illustration, from that old book. So, we are going to make the traditional Hollywood version of Glinda, and I'm actually very excited about this project, because yes, I want to make something very colorful, something very yeah, bringing good memories up. But actually, before we start working on this project, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Skillshare. Yeah, one more time, they're supporting this channel and my art here on YouTube. And you know, I'm myself a long-time member of this online learning community. I have finished lots of classes there, learned lots of new skills. And Skillshare cover multiple topics like illustration, design, photography, video, I don't know, freelancing, lifestyle, you name it. But me personally, I'm mostly interested in digital illustration and graphic design. So the class that I want to recommend you today, I have finished it just a couple of days ago and it's called Drawing Illustrated Boarding Pass in Procreate by Esther Narioshi. This class is all about using fun and simple illustration techniques to draw an imaginary boarding pass to your dream city, to your dream destination. And since I am actually living on holidays just in two days, on Sunday, and I'm really looking forward to it, as you can imagine. This class was a perfect choice for me the last weekend, but you don't really have to plan a real trip to join this class. The teacher is actually talking about an imaginary travel to a dream destination. So I think anyone could enjoy working on this mini project. And I also think it's totally beginners friendly. You don't have to draw like an artist to make your own fantasy boarding pass. And here is mine, by the way. This is what I've ended up making, had a lot of fun working on it, and you can see that I'm really looking forward to go on holidays. So, and if you want to try Skillshare, they still have a special offer for you this summer. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare instead of 14 days you could get before. So you can check it and you can decide yourself if it is something for you. So thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and for keeping us creative. And now let's go and let's make the Glinda doll. So, I've decided to use this Frankie doll as a model for my project. I know she doesn't really look like Billy Burke who plays Glinda in the film, but I want to make more a cartoonish version of Glinda today and Frankie is absolutely ideal for making all kinds of cute characters like fairies, good witches, I don't know, I really love her face type for it. So, now let's quickly remove everything she still has on. Then we'll cut her hair off, we will wipe off her face with pure acetone and, you know, do all this satisfying preparation routine.
So that's it. The canvas is clean and we can finally start creating. And first of all, I want to give her new hair. Glinda has ginger hair and I think that this hair color will be a good choice for my doll. It's very pretty and very elegant ginger doll hair. So first of all, I'm going to cover her head with acrylics matching the new hair color. And then I will stick hair into the holes in her head using my rerouting tool. Made out of an exacto knife with a needle with a loop cut open. A couple of hours later we can enjoy the end result of this work and her hair looks really really beautiful today. So now I can add glue inside of the head and then I will let it dry for a day. When the glue gets dry, I can seal the face with Mr. Super Clear sealant and after this I'm going to start drawing her face and first of all actually I want to change her skin tone from green into some light nude. And for this I will apply first two layers of pink pastels, very light pink, and then I will do a layer of very light burnt umber on top of it. And these three layers are normally enough to reverse Frankie's skin tone. And after this I will be able to sketch the future face and then we will actually continue working on her skin tone a little bit but then we will add shadows, highlights, blush, you know, to make it more alive. So when the skin looks good to me, I can start drawing the face, eyebrows and lips using my watercolor pencils.
Adding reflections to the doll's eyes using white acrylics is a very, very important step in drawing faces because you can see it now, it immediately makes the eyes, the face much more alive. Okay guys, now you can see how drastically her skin tone get changed as a result of using soft pastels. And now we can repeat all these manipulations with her body as well, but first of all I will sand it with nail buffers and seal it with Mr. Super Clear to make the surface completely matte. Okay, this is it guys, the drawing part is over, the face and the body look good together and now I actually want to style her hair and we are going to make curls this time using a stick and a hair straightener. I know it's been a while since we've done it the last time, it's a very very long process but I feel like my Glinda needs something like this today. So this is it guys, this is where I've ended up almost 3 hours later, beautiful curly hair, I really love it, it gives me a little bit of Shirley Temple vibes, but it's okay, I want my Glinda to look like a doll. So now I'm going to attach false lashes, add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips, and then we'll finally move on to the next part of this project where we will make her outfit and accessories. Well, actually my mom is going to make the dress because it's a little bit too iconic for me to recreate it myself. So right now you can see her work in progress video showing how she made it. And this dress, it has quite an 18th century shape with this huge hoop skirt. Then it has huge sleeves and all kinds of decorations. And this is coming rather from some later 19th century. It's like already from another time. So, and in general, it's a beautiful dress, and let's see what my mom is going to make out of it.
this is it guys this is finally the finished outfit arrived at my studio I don't know it's so beautiful so well made I don't know the hoop skirt is just another piece of art looks like a mini version of a real human size hoop skirt really super pretty <laughs> Here are also a couple of decorations that my mom added to this outfit, so I think we are quite ready and finished here. So, and now I still have to make a crown for her, a staff and also a pair of shoes. Let's start probably with the crown, because this is the most challenging part for me. And you know Glinda has this tall, very sparkly, see-through crown. I think it's a really unique headpiece and the shape of it even reminds me of the Nefertiti's tall blue crown. So I think I will start with creating the carton model of it, because the crown has a quite difficult shape. Okay, this is it. I think the carton pattern fits really good, so now we can make it out of something see-through and sparkly. And I'm going to use actually this piece of see-through warbler thermoplastic. And then, guys, I have this beautiful iridescent foil. Really, it's so pretty. I've used it a couple of times in my videos before. It looks almost holographic. You can really see all kinds of colors here. And this foil is actually a sticker. And it's a very nice and strong sticker. So now we are going to glue the foil to the warbler. Then we can trace the pattern. And guys, check it out how beautiful it looks, really. I'm in love with this foil, it looks absolutely magical, really super pretty. So now let's connect it in a circle, add a piece to the forehead, and then we'll decorate it with all kinds of glitters and rhinestones and like, I don't know, with anything else. guys 
check it out. The crown is finished. I think it looks very pretty. It feels like I'm in some crown making period of my life right now. Last time it was a crown for the goddess Kali and this time it's something so special for Glinda. Really very pretty. So now I can put the crown aside and I will make a staff for my doll. In the movie it looked like a star covered with crystals. So let's make it. And I begin with shaping a piece of wire as a star. Then I glue tape to one side of it and I fill in the star with epoxy resin and decorate it with rhinestones. And I've made one side of it more flat and another side more kind of scattered and messy. It will give different vibes on pictures depending on which side you are showing at the moment. So in the holding stick I'm decorating with this chain made out of tiny balls. guys and here is the stuff it looks super cute I don't know to me it looks absolutely finished and now we still need to make a pair of shoes for our doll but you know actually we never see Glinda's shoes in the movie because on one hand I've heard that Billy Burke had her foot in the cast during the entire film shoot and that there were just no special shoes made for the character on another hand there is this photo of Billy Burke's Glinda's shoes for sale I don't know, poor women in the 30s, they had to wear heels even while having their foot broken, I guess. But anyway, these shoes don't look that inspiring, so I will make something different that would fit the crown and the staff using my Warbler thermoplastic.
and here are the shoes. This is where I've ended up with my fantasy. They look really good together with the rest of the accessories. So I think I can put it all on the doll and then I'll take a look at the end result pictures. And here is finally my doll version of Glinda the Good Witch and you know she looks exactly like I imagined her years ago in my childhood. She's super cute, she also looks super nice, she's all glowing and all her details like her hair, the dress, all of it is super cute. I don't know, she's in general looks like such a sweetheart, not normal. My inner child feels very happy and very satisfied today. The dress made by my mom is super pretty again, another beautiful creation. I really can't wait to show you what she's making for Halloween because it's gonna be absolutely epic, guys. I will start working on the new Halloween specials immediately after I come back from holidays. And I don't know, is it normal going on holidays while being excited about working after the holidays? But yeah, this is it. It is what it is, my reality. So and now tell me please your thoughts about this week's makeover. Were you a fan of Glinda as a kid or did you like some other stories? Did you like the Wizard of Oz in general? Uh, who were your favorite characters? And by the way, have you ever heard about the Russian fake Oz book? I'm really curious to hear. So, and this doll is now available for sale on eBay for three days. You can find the link in the description box under this video if you're also a Glinda fan and it might be something for you. The only thing is that I will already be on holidays when the eBay auction is over on Monday. So I won't be able to ship the doll immediately. I will bring her to the post office on the 16th of September right after I come back home. So guys, and that was my doll transformation of the week. I really hope you've enjoyed it today. And if so, of course, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button to get notified about my new doll repaint videos. The next one will be after my holidays, hopefully in two weeks, but I'm still working on it. So <clears throat> I'm living in two days, yes. So maybe I will upload her a little bit later, maybe a week later, maybe a couple of days later, but I will let you know through some message, maybe in the community tab or somehow I will let you know. So, see you in my next video, guys. Please have a nice weekend. Love you. Bye.